Welcome to Breakthrough. Thank you for joining us. Be sure to click the subscribe button followed by the bell icon so you don't miss any future videos. Uh, I want to go right into the message this morning and uh, I'm really excited about this message this morning. Um, matter of fact, I kept coming upstairs last night after as I was working on it uh, and I, I worked on it till uh, about midnight last night and uh, uh, and I've been working on it for a couple, three weeks now. And I was, I was uh, very excited about this, and I'm going to attempt to preach the whole message today, but I'm not sure I can do it. And so if I don't get it done, uh, maybe you guys will give me grace and uh, let, me, let me finish it next week. Uh, but I, I'm going to try my best. Amen? And uh, so if you, if you have notes, honestly, if you have a book, and you're a note taker, today is your day, it's your lucky day. There is so many good notes to take today, so much great uh, revelation here. And I, I want to go back to a fami very familiar passage of scripture uh, in 1 Kings 19, verses 19 through 21. And I'm going to just read those uh, three verses this morning, and I'm going to attempt to do my best to get through it. But uh, God, God really has stirred this back up in my, my spirit uh, and uh, I, I believe that you will be blessed. Matter of fact, I believe your life will be changed today as we, as we walk this through just a little bit. And uh, let's just see what, what God will do. Amen? So 1 Kings 19, 19, and, and I'll start reading. Uh, so he departed hence, thence, and found Elisha, the son of uh, Shaphat. I have a hard thing because I want to say Shaphat or Shaphat, and I don't know how to say that word. Some of these names are really weird. You know, it's kind of like Everett. If you don't know how to say Everett, you just really don't know how to say Everett. But some of these guys in the Bible, I mean, I don't know what their parents didn't like them or what, but uh, <laughs> they just named them some really funny names. And uh, so let's call them Shaphat, Shaphat. I think Shaphat sounds better. Uh, <laughs> who was plowing with 12 yoke of oxen before him. And he was with and he with the twelfth. And Elijah passed by him. I put the pause in there for, for reference. And cast his mantle upon him. And he left the oxen and ran after Elijah and said, Let me, I pray thee, kiss my father and my mother. And then I will follow thee. And he said unto him, Go back again. For what have I done? Of thee. What have I done to thee? You never see that colon right there? Go back again, colon. For what have I done to thee? And he returned back from him and took the yoke of oxen and slew them and boiled their flesh with the instruments of the oxen and gave unto the people and they did eat. Then he arose and went after Elijah and ministered unto him. Let me just pray for us. Lord, I pray right now that you just touch us, touch our heart, touch our mind, our eyes and our ears, God, that we would see, hear, know, and understand something new from the word of God today. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. I, I really love, I love this, this portion of scripture, and it's, uh, it's a really uh, powerful uh, portion of scripture, and I think we can learn a lot tonight, today from this. And uh, the first thing I want to, uh, I want to tell you is the, the title of the message today is Join Up, okay? It's Join Up. And uh, I, I, I think it's, it's, it's awesome because uh, when you think about it, I, I mean, I'll just go back to when I was a, a young person and I went to school uh, and I was in like a fifth, sixth grade, uh, fourth grade, third grade, I think maybe even in kindergarten it started, but you, you always wanted to be a part of the group of the cool kids. You know, I, I, I always had to struggle with that because I was kind of nerdy and I was kind of backwards. And then when I was younger... I stumbled around a lot. I was kind of clumsy. I didn't really have my uh, motor skills fully functioning, you know, until I got to be, I don't know, about 50 years old. And, uh, <laughs> and so I would stumble around a lot, and, and I was kind of clumsy, and, uh, and I was nerdy. I was always, uh, always one of those kids that uh, I, I always wanted to know why, you know, and I didn't, you know, let's, let's go play. And I was like, okay, why, you know, because <laughs> I don't know if it's important to go play right now because I had other things on my, on my mind. And, and uh, I, I think it's, it, it was interesting, though, as, as I was growing up, you know, you'd have certain groups of kids in school. I don't know if you went to school 
uh, if you remember back to schools, I do, but uh, I had, you had the, the, the jocks, you know, the guys that were the football stars and the, they'd go out and play uh, football. They were all bigger guys and stuff. Those were the jocks. And then you had the, the nerdy people. They had glasses on and they had the tape between the glasses and they had the pocket protector with all their pencils in it. And, uh, and, and then you had the, uh, the, 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 the kids that were the partiers. And then you had, and then you had uh, the preppy kids, okay? And you might change the labels on those groups, but, but uh, in school, uh, there was groups. And, and, and I always found myself not in any group. I don't know, maybe you're not like that, but I was never in any of those groups because I wasn't really preppy. I wasn't really a jock, and I wasn't really a nerd, and I wasn't a partier. So I, I kind of stood in the middle, and, and, and so in school, I had friends, okay? But they always came to me and just talked to me about funny things about life and about situations and about personality problem and about this problem. And, you know, I didn't, I didn't really know and understand, and they probably didn't know or understand. Maybe you've found yourself in that situation before where you're, like, out eating somewhere, and somebody just comes up to you, and they're, like, start telling you. They sit down, and they tell you their whole life story, and they just begin to vomit, you know, on uh, all of their problems onto your life. And uh, not, not necessarily like that while you're eating, but, uh, but they begin to, they begin to give, give you their life. Because I'm going to tell you, there's, there's the Spirit of God in us, right, that has joined with us, amen? And we are part of something bigger than us, amen? And, and, it's, it is, it, 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 and as, we, as we walked into the church this morning, okay, you should feel a kindred spirit because we are part, amen, of the body of Christ. God has called us together this morning for a purpose. He has a plan and he has a, 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 a something he wants you to join up with, amen? That, that's what we have to do. We have to join together with the, with the spirit of God to, to let God begin to, to, to move, amen? Uh, so my first word to you, that first two words, is show up this morning. Show up. And uh, uh, <laughs> man, did God show up today? Amen. God showed up today. Amen. I mean, we got a, we got a word from God this morning, and I'm so excited about about that word of God. It was very good. To, actually, that was point on. Amen. That was God Himself speaking to us. And I'm so happy that God has used uh, Sister Paula in that area. And uh, I want to I want to tell you that there are, are more gifts in this room. Amen. That are not being used. Amen. That need to be used. Amen. There needs to be, we need to let God use the gift that we are, amen, in the body of Christ. We need to become free to let that happen, amen? So, but, so here, here is God showing up today, not only today, but in this story, God showed up. Elisha, Elisha was uh, probably hard at work plowing. He was just like, another day. What are you going to do today, Elisha? I'm going to go out and plow. And I was, I was wondering, why would Elisha be out plowing anyways? Because probably because his dad sent him out to plow, you know, because dad said, you know, a little hard work isn't going to kill you, son. Get out there and do some plowing, okay? And so he went out there with the other servants and began to plow field. And, and uh, it's, it's interesting that, that he was out there uh, worshiping. <laughs> See, I, let, me, let me just stop there for a second, okay? He was doing what his father said. Elisha was doing what his father said. Turn to your neighbor and say, Elisha was doing what his father said. Amen. And I want to tell you this morning, this morning you had the same opportunity to do what your father said this morning, amen? When we came to church this morning, we got here, amen? And when we got into worship, we, we had the opportunity to do what our father said, to worship our father and, and, to, and to experience the presence of God. Isn't it interesting that God wants to show up in our life? I, I, I think it's very powerful if you think about it. He wants to show up in our life. God wants to show up in your life. Not only show up, but he wants to change you. Amen? Amen? And I said it Thursday night, and I think it's so powerful. I, it, the, the, we are in a, most of the time, we are in a defensive posture when it comes to God working in our life. We're like, I want God to work in my life. No, I don't. I want God to work in my life, but no, I don't. Because he's asked you to do something, and, he won't, and you won't do it, and you won't do it, and you won't do it, and you won't do it. And we get stubborn, and we get stuck, and we get sitting down, and we get, uh, we, we just get to a place where we're just not going to listen to what he says. And then so he, well, here's God going, I'm showing up. I'm here today for you. Here's my presence. And then he's asking you to change. <laughs> But we're in a defensive posture, okay? And we need to allow God to begin to work in our life, amen? <laughs> it was just an, an ordinary day. Elisha was plowing in the field, just an ordinary day, just another day. He had probably done it hundreds of times before that, I don't know. But it was just an ordinary day, 
Amen? Elisha, El, El, <laughs> I, have to, I have to believe this, though, that Elisha was actually looking for God. I have to believe that because if Elisha wasn't looking for God, I don't know that God would have ever showed up or sent somebody called Elijah into his life. He was looking. Amen? He was looking. He was looking. So I wonder what we're looking for this morning. Or what are we looking for this morning? Because you're going <laughs> to... Isn't it true? You always find what you're looking for. Isn't it true? If you're looking to be disappointed, guess what? You will be disappointed. If you're looking for a fence, guess what? You're going to find a fence. It might, it might be a chain link fence. It might be a white fence. Okay? And it might be other things too, but it, you're going to find what you're looking for. It's, it's, it's a truth. Amen? I, I, res, I remember this. And I preached this, uh, three, I think it was three Thursdays ago, I, about, about the man at the gate, beautiful. Remember? And he was, he was shaking his cup, and he was saying, he was saying, uh, got any change, got any change, got any change? And Peter and John came, and, and, and what God had in mind that day was not coins in a cup, amen? It was change. Peter said, silver and gold have I none, none, but such as I have. Remember, he had something. I give unto you that in the name of Jesus Christ, rise up and walk, amen? And, and the change that man got that day was not coins in a cup. It was a life change, amen? He no longer had to be carried to and fro. He, he, he walked on his own, amen? He went, as a matter of fact, his first thing he did was stand up leaping and praising God and went with him to church, amen? And began to praise God and the, and the people gathered together because of what they saw happen, amen? Because of the display. Because of the display in our life, I wonder who's coming to church, amen? Because see, that's important for you to understand that, that we are a witness of the power and the majesty and the might of God Almighty in our life and it's time for us amen yeah. it's time for us to not be defensive okay but to let God use you to let God change you to, to let the world see who, who he really is in your life amen hmm. <laughs> asked the, the, the man at the gate beautiful he asked he received and then he gave I think that's powerful he, he asked for one thing got a, a totally different thing and then gave. Amen? He gave what he had received. He gave it back. Amen? <laughs> Amen. Mm. You know, there, there's a, there's a, a, in business, there's, there's, a, there's a gap between expectation and reality. And the gap between expectation and reality is, is where disappointment comes in. And when disappointment comes in, morale tanks. That's what happens in business. Uh, and so if morale is in, in the toilet, okay, if your morale tanks, guess what happens? Productivity goes down, okay? But if, if expectation uh, uh, is under reality, morale goes up, right? Because my expectation was here, but my reality was there. And see, I, I think sometimes in life, especially as a Christian, we expect God to fix everything where we do nothing, see? And so our expectation is, is not correct. And so our expectation is not standing on a truth, it's standing on an expectation that's based on something that's not true. It's my will, not God's will, see? And we don't know the difference as a Christian often, and we walk around expecting something that he'll never give us. And we begin to be disappointed in who God is, and the world sees it. Okay, I'm asking you this morning to switch it. Amen? Not my will, God, but yours be done. Amen? My expectation is on him and him alone. My, my life is in his hands. Amen? Not in my hands. Amen? <laughs> I, I always like to, I pray this sometimes, and it's stupid, and you may, you may not even like it, but I always pray this, and I say, God, I work for you. Okay? If you say go, I go. If you say stay, I stay. If you say pray, I pray. If you say no, I say okay. Amen? If you say yes, I say yes. Amen? And because I work for him. That's what I thought was so powerful this morning when Paula stood up and was bold. Amen? And read because God said, she said. Amen? Because Edwin felt the presence of God. She worshiped, and she didn't care what you think, thought about her. And you know what? I'm proud of her for that, because I, that touched my, my life. Amen, this morning? I needed that this morning. Amen? 
Elisha was working and plowing when the man of God walked by. He was working. Amen? He wasn't sitting around. He was doing what God had placed in his hand, and that was being obedient to his father. Amen? Being obedient to his father. He didn't have to go looking for something out there to do. He had to live what was in his hand. He did what was in his hand. He was obedient to the call of his father, his earthly father, to go and work in the field. It might have been hot. I bet it was hot. Do you think it was hot? Do you think it was raining that day? I don't think so. I bet you the sun was shining, and I bet it was hot. Amen? I bet you he was sweating while he was plowing. Have you ever plowed with a couple oxen, a couple ox with a yoke, and you got this big plow, and you got to stand on it, and you're like, Grr. once you get it down in the ground, it's like you got to fight to keep it in the ground, and you're just walking along like that. And he was walking in the rear part of it. Okay, There was 12 yoke. He was the 12th and the one in the end. He was the, the last one in the row. Amen? He was behind, and he was like, I got to keep up. I got to keep up. You know, he had to keep up because, uh, you know, when you get guys, especially you get 11 or 12 guys working together, guess what you get? You get a little ego going on because I've had a little uh, time to work with some guys before, and you get some ego, and the guy up front is like, I'm going to beat these guys across this field, and all the other guys are going, we got to keep up with him because I ain't going to let him beat me across the field, and pretty soon you get all these guys going, look at, look at the sun back there. He's, he's like, I'm, I'm going to keep up with those guys. They're, these guys work for my dad. You know, that's what he was saying. And Elijah walked by and flung his mantle. I always wondered, why would he just throw his mantle on him? You know, why would he just walk by? He didn't even really say in the, in the verse that he said anything to him at all. He didn't say one word. He just went and kept on walking. And, and, and I, think, I think Elisha was like, it's like, oh, Who's this crazy guy throwing his coat on me, okay? And you know, mantle, the mantle is really, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a sign of authority. So, so uh, uh, Elijah was throwing his, uh, giving authority to Elisha in that moment. <clears throat> authority was given. You know, I heard this statement uh, the other day, and, and, and I was, it was a guy, he was uh, leading worship, and he said, he said, uh, I was addicted to this. Addicted to this. He, he's addicted. He was leading worship at the moment. And he said, I don't want to be addicted to this. I don't want to be addicted to power or influence. I want to be a, addicted to the love of God. Amen? I want the love of God. And see, if, if we stand in this moment here, if, if I stand in this moment here addicted to a power or influence, I'll never have any power or influence because it's not my power or influence anyways. Amen? It's his and his alone. I'm in love with the God of all power. Amen? It's his power this morning. Amen? So let me, let me give you this. Stand up. Stand up. Today is my opportunity to stand up. Today is your opportunity to stand up. Today is your day to make a difference, amen? In your life, in your family's life, in your work people's life, and in all of the people in your life, life, it's your day, amen, to stand up, stand up. Tell your neighbor, stand up. You know, Elisha didn't know at the moment when Elijah flung his mantle on him that God had spoken to Elijah. Yeah, Elisha didn't know it. He's like, here's a crazy guy throwing a coat on me, okay? <laughs> you know, and, and, and it's interesting that uh, Elisha uh, had to run to catch up with him because <laughs> Elijah just kept on going. You know, I don't know. Elijah was kind of a crazy guy anyways. If you really look at him, he was, he was really crazy. But uh, Elisha finally could, figured out what was going on. I don't know. Maybe he had to put the brakes on, the oxen. I don't know. He didn't want him to go in off this way or that way. He had to say, whoa, Nelly, or whatever the oxen's name was, and had to put the brakes on or whatever. And he had to run to catch up with him. And he said, he said something really powerful. <laughs> Let me just say this before I say that. How many moments have walked right on by you and you haven't seen them? I want you to ask yourself that question. How many moments, God moments, have walked right past you and you haven't, you haven't even seen them because you're so focused on the wrong stuff? How many times have that happened in my life? I, I, I thought about that and I wrote that on, on my notes and I, and I started to cry. I was like, you know, I don't know. But I bet you there's been a few Amen? I bet you there's been a few. I bet you there's a, somebody, somebody that, that needed me that I wasn't available. Amen? Somebody that wanted, uh, uh, God wanted to use me in a life of somebody and I wasn't there for them. You know, I bet there's been a few. Amen? But, but, but <laughs> not today. Not anymore. 
Amen? Not today, not anymore. 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 Amen? I want God to use me today. Amen? You know, I've, I've read this story a, a bunch of times. I've preached uh, uh, parts of this before. And, and, and uh, I want to go back and look at that verse, 1919, uh, okay? And it says, And so he departed thence. Elijah departed thence. So Elijah departed from, where did he depart from? Does anybody remember? He was in a cave, right? He departed from the cave where God had spoke to him and said, Go find Elisha. Right? Go find Jehu. Go find, go find, go, go do this. Because Elijah was in the Elijah was in the cave hiding. That's what he was doing. He was hiding in the cave. Okay? And, and and so he, being Elijah, departed thence because God spoke to him. And found a comma and, and found. So he went and looked for who God said for him to look for. And his name was Elisha, the son of Shaphat, right? Shape hat. Shaphat, shape hat, Shaphat, shape hat, Shaphat. I'll get you, you'll get, you'll get it in a minute. So, you ever thought about why they said Elisha, the son of this guy? You ever wondered why Elisha had to go back and kiss his father and his mother? You ever wondered why? You ever wondered why he was the last set of oxen of 12. You ever thought about the fact that Elisha, his dad, Mr. Shaphat, had a lot of money. He had a lot of influence. He had, he had servants. He had 11 of them, and he was, his son was the 12th one. Elisha had to say goodbye to his, his life, to his security, to, to all of his, his inheritance, he had to give up something. And see, it, it, and also, I've always preached this the other way. It, did you see how Elisha went back and killed the oxen and burnt up, burnt up all the stuff and then had a big party with, his, with the servants so he could never go back to plowing? And I always thought, well, that would be great. I, I'd love to quit work myself. <laughs> you know, but he had, to get, he had to let go of what his security was so that he can receive something new in his life. Sounds a little bit something like i got to let go of something old in order to receive something new. Amen? So I'll never receive anything new unless I re let go of something old. Did you also notice that there was a sacrifice to be made? Elisha had to make a sacrifice to receive something from God. Amen? He had to sacrifice something very precious to him. You see that? Because God, there is only one God. There will only be one God in your life. It might be influence, it might be money, it might be my, what my daddy can or can't do for me. But, but we have to sacrifice something. Amen? There, there, there is no obedience without sacrifice. There really isn't. You're never going to be obedient unless you, unless you sacrifice. Amen? So, so, Elisha, the son of... That just sounds so rich when I say Mr. Shape Hat. <laughs> Mr. Shaphat. <laughs> Doesn't it sound rich? His son. He was out plowing the big acre. That's what my, we had at our house, we had a, a we were the only house on the street that had a, we had a house and then we had a, a lot where no house was built and we called it the big acre even though it wasn't that big. And all the neighborhood kids would come over and they would play, uh, you know, kick the can and and wiffle ball, and we'd break windows in the neighbor's house and hit the house and do all kinds of crazy things because it was the big acre. And then when, I remember as a kid, we used to plow up half of it and, and plant a garden, and then we'd have to come home and weed the garden. And I, I never did like that. Uh, but it's interesting that Elisha was trading his covering, his father covering for his heavenly father's covering. Amen. I, this happened before, uh, uh, later in Matthew 4, verse 21 and verse 22, and you might remember this story. Jesus was walking along the shore, and he saw two brethren, James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, in a ship with Zebedee, their father. And he said, he were mending their nets, and he called them, and they immediately left their father and followed him. You see, the call, it's the same call. The same call. The same call that Elisha received, the same call 
that James and John receive. It's the same call that we receive. Amen? That's, that's what I want you to see there. To, to leave the comfort and familiar place in, in our life, we, we must listen to the call, right? We must go. John 10, verse 27. Does anybody remember what that verse says? My sheep hear my voice, and I know them. That's not my responsibility. That's God's responsibility, right? And then we're supposed to follow him. Our, our job is to follow after we hear. That's it. I follow after I hear. Amen? He, he already knows you, by the way. He already knows you. He knows you. Tell your neighbor, you know what? God already knows you. He knows you. He knows you. He knows you. Now, I, you guys want to see something really cool? This is the part where I want you to, to take no, some notes, okay? You want to see something cool? It's going to be, it's very extensive. I'm going to talk an awful lot right now, okay? But if you can just grasp just pieces of it, okay, it'll be amazing. It'll really change your life. Amen? Are you ready? Are you ready? Something really cool? Okay. Did you know how many miracles did Elijah do? Does anybody know off the top of your head? Do you remember? I'll, I'll tell you. He did 14. 14 miracles, right? And, and, and I'll, I'll list them for you because I have a book of lists at home, and that's why I opened up a book, and I, I typed every one of them in here. Because uh, the number, number one, Elijah, he said there will be no rain, right? That was the number one miracle. The second one is he had raven catering, okay? Uh, raven catering. They, the ravens brought food to him and they catered to him. And then number three was the meal and the oil. Remember that? And then uh, number four was the widow's son that was resurrected. Number, number five, uh, he called fire, uh, fire down from heaven to consume the sacrifice on the altar. Uh, uh, I can preach about every one of these, okay? And I'm trying not to preach. Amen? Help Lord, Lord help Pastor Ever not to preach on any of these. Number six, he called for rain. It rained. Number, number seven, eight, and nine were all prophecies. I don't have time to go into all of them. Number 10 and 11, he called fire down to consume 50 soldiers twice, okay? They came to get him. He called fire. If I be the man of God, if I be the man of God. So two times fire came down and consumed the soldiers. Number 12 was the parting of Jordan. And number 13 was Elisha's double portion. Uh, uh, underline Elisha's double portion. Number 14, he was caught away to heaven. Amen? And then Elisha, who was, who, whose mantle... Elisha, Elijah threw the mantle on Elisha. Do you know how many miracles that Elisha did? Does anybody know? Anybody know? Anybody know? Anybody know? 28, okay? 28, because he got the double portion, right? Because you remember, he said, he said, he said, if uh, I want a double portion of what you have, right? And so Elijah, Elijah said, if you see me caught away, right, uh, then you will have double portion. So Elisha did, in fact, 28 miracles, okay? And I'm going to list them for you just because I can. All right? Uh, the, number one was the parting of Jordan. Immediately he parted Jordan. I could preach on all this. I'm going to try not to. Number two was the healing of the waters. Number three was the curse of the she bears. Number four was uh, filling the valley with water. Number five was the deception of the valley of blood. Number six was vessels of oil. Number seven, the Shunammite woman w would have a son. He prophesied. Number eight, uh, the, the, the same son, he resurrected that son. Or it was uh, number nine, the healing of gourds. Number 10, the miracle of bread. Number 11, healing of Naaman, all right, the leper. Number 12, the uh, perception of uh, Gehazi's uh, uh, transgression. Uh, number 13, the cursing him with leprosy. Number 14 was the floating axe head. And number 15, the prophecy uh, of the Syrian battle plans. That was a really amazing story. I like, I'm going to preach a message on that one of these days. Number 16, the vision of chariots. Number 17, the smiting of the Syrian army with blindness. Uh, number 18 was restoring that army with sight. Number 19 was prophecy of uh, end of famine. Number 20, the prophecies uh, of the scoffing nobleman who would see but not partake. Number 21, the deception of Syrians with the sound of chariots. Number 22, the prophecy of seven-year famine. Prof uh, number 23, the prophecy of uh, the, uh, some guy's death that I have a hard time saying. Number 24, prophecy of uh, uh, another guy's death. Prophecy in number 25, prophecy Jehu would smite the house of Ahab. Number 26, the prophecy Joash would smite the Syrians. Number 27, prophecy Joash would smite Syria thrice. Remember the king beat on the, the ground three times, not six or ten, but three, and he got mad, and then he died. Number 28 happened when he was dead, and I wanted to bring this back. I'm really excited about this because I get to talk about bones for just one verse. <laughs> Amen. Second, Second Kings 13, 20 and 21 says, And Elisha died, and they buried him, and 
the bands of the Mo Moabites invaded the land at the coming in of the year, and it came to pass as they were bearing a man, they were carrying him, that behold, they spied a band of men, and they cast the man to the sepulcher of Elisha. And when the man was let down and touched the bones of Elisha, he revived and stood up on his feet. God is faithful. He gave him a double portion. The last miracle was when he was dead. Amen? Double portion. God keeps his promises. Every single bone. Not a bone is broken. Remember that. Not a bone is broken. Amen? Are you, are you ready? You want a double portion? I got to keep going because it's a little bit extensive. But I'm going to tell you it'll bless your life. A double portion. God keeps his promises. Amen? Can, can we go just a little deeper? Can we go a little deeper? You know who else did miracles? Jesus. Jesus did miracles. Jesus did miracles. Do you know how many, guess how many miracles Jesus did? Does anybody know? Does anybody know? I didn't think you did either because I didn't either because I had to go count them. I have a lit book of lists, okay? So I looked it up. He did 37 miracles. 37. 37. <laughs> Water to wine, heals the official son, three is drives out the evil spirit, four heals Peter's mother-in-law. Thank you, Jesus. I don't know why he did that. <laughs> <laughs> number, number five, uh, heals many sick. Six, miraculous catch of fish. Uh, seven, cleanse the lepers. Uh, eight, heals the sincere servant. Uh, nine, heals the paralytic. Uh, ten, with the guy with the withered hand. Eleven, raises the little son. Twelve, calms the storm. Thirteen, casts all de cast demons into pigs. Uh, Fourteen, heals woman in a crowd. Fifteen, Jairus' daughter. Uh, Jairus' daughter. Uh, Sixteen, heals two blind men. Seventeen, heals man unable to speak, uh, 18 invalid at Bethesda, 19 feeds 5,000, 20 walks on water, 21 heals many sick, 22 woman, uh, demon possessed daughter is healed, 23 deaf and dumb man is healed, 24 feeds 4,000, 25 blind man, 26 uh, heals a man born blind, 27 a boy in a, with a demon is healed, 28 there is money in the fish's mouth, 29 uh, the blind and the mute demonic is healed, uh, 30, the crippled woman. 31, heals the man with uh, uh, dropsy. Uh, uh, 32, cleanses 10 lepers. 33, raises Lazarus from the dead. 34, restores sight to Bartimaeus. 35, uh, uh, withers the fig tree. 36, heals servant's severed ear. Peter cut off. 37, uh, miraculous uh, drought of fishes again. So, I said all of that to say this, okay? All of that, double portion, double portion. Elijah had 14 miracles. Elisha had 28. Jesus had 37. Are you keeping score? Are you keeping score? All these numbers are divisible by seven, which is the number of God, except for 37. 37 is not divisible by seven. 14, all right, 7 times 2 is 14. 28 is 7 times 4. But 37, that's just weird to me. So 7 times 2 is 14. 7 times 4 is 28. And 7 times 6 is 42. God and man is 42. If you take 37 from 42, guess what you get? You get five. You get five. Interesting that it would be the number five, which is my pot. Apostles, pastors, teachers, evangelists, preachers. Amen? It's a five-fold ministry. That's interesting to me. So, so let me just go a little further, though. Let me go a little further, though. Seven times five is 35. Five is the number of grace. And, and seven is the number of God. See? God and God's grace in me. Amen? And my double portion is two. <laughs> Gets 37. So my portion is in Christ. Isn't that amazing? That's kind of amazing. It's just in the numbers, right? <laughs> God plus grace. Right? God's grace in me. God, God, God has a purpose for us. Jesus did 37 not 42. <laughs> no mistake in the count. There's no mistake in the count. All right? So, so he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and some teachers. And we all have that for uh, Ephesians. I'm reading Ephesians 4, 11 and 12. 
it says, for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Amen? It's about the body. Amen? It's about the body. Our portion is in Christ this morning. Amen? That's really powerful. And I want to let that sit there, okay? I want to let that sit there because it should change you. It should change you. It should change all of us. It changed me. I got so excited last night when I was, when I was doing all those numbers. I came up like three times. I was, I was standing there. I was like, oh, I can't believe it. This is exciting to me to know that, 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 that. God will use the grace of God in our life, amen, to do amazing things. But we have to begin to operate what he has already given us, amen? Let me, let me just tie a bow on this today. It's only when we are willing to depart from our current position, right? I, I, I want to say this before I say anything else. Every single morning when I get up and I open the Word of God, the Word of God comes into my life and changes me every day. Okay? Some days I may not feel it. Some days I may not understand it. But every day there should be a change. And if the Word of God comes into me every day and I'm changed, I am new every day. Amen? And I want, I want you to get excited because... God wants to have a new kind of relationship with you every day. In other words, I grew yesterday. I changed yesterday. Today, I am new. Amen? He's going to speak different to me. He's going to talk different to me. I'm going to begin to be different and act different and go a different direction. A little bit every day. Just a little bit every day. But it's not something that happens once in my life. I do get saved one time. Amen? And he forgives me of my sin. But I have to grow in relationship with him. And as I grow in relationship with him, he wants to use me differently. Amen? Not the way he did yesterday. Not the way he did two days ago. You know, if it, if it, was, if it was like that, I could pray the same single prayer every day and everybody would get healed the same way because I pray this certain prayer a certain way. But Jesus never prayed the same way for a single person. Everyone was different. Amen? And it's important for us to understand that Jesus wants to be one in, with us, right? We, we, he wants to be in us, but he wants us to be in him where we're one and we're working, working it out. Amen? Unless we're willing to depart from our current position, a.k.a. caveman, you might be hiding in a cave, okay? You might be hiding in there because you're insecure. You might be hiding in there because you're scared. You might be hiding for, for whatever reason. But we must be willing to depart from our current position, our current insecurity, our current self-reliance, okay? Et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Because I don't, I don't have to point fingers at anything. But we must be willing to depart from it, amen? Because the, God, the call of God is in all of our lives. Amen? Each of us are called by God. Each of us are brought here this morning. And I... I <laughs> it is then, when we depart, it is then that we will, are free to go and find the real call of God in our life. Amen? Yes, He's calling you. You know, the Spirit of God, the Spirit of Elijah is here to reveal Yahweh, okay? Yahweh, which means the God that brought all things into existence. That God, amen? Not, not my God, not my vision of what he looks like, not, not, not what I think. That God that created everything, amen? The one by whom all things exist, especially, <laughs> especially in my life and my purpose, in my place. He wants to reveal my life, my position, and my purpose. Amen? What is my purpose? It's in Jesus. What is, what is my sacrifice? It's in Jesus. Amen? Jesus is my sacrifice, but I, I, my sacri I sacrifice everything for him. Amen? It's his. My purpose equals Jesus. My place equals Jesus. I feel it this morning. I feel it. The higher calling. It screams into my spirit, Jesus. 
That's why I read the Word of God. That's why I pray. That's why I sing. That's why I worship. That's why I come here and set up every single week. It's Jesus. There's a higher calling. Amen? Elijah departed. Elijah found. Left and found. Let's have the courage this morning to leave and find God's true word for us. Amen? Amen? God is good. Let me just pray for us. If you would stand. Father, we're so grateful today for your word. We're so grateful, Lord, that you don't make a single mistake. Lord, we're so grateful for all that you, do, you have done in our life. Lord, we're so grateful that you forgave us of our sins. We're so grateful that you have come and made a home in our life. Lord, we're so grateful that here and now, I declare that I'm going to leave everything else behind and I'm going to focus on you. I'm going to focus on your calling and I'm going to step into that. And I just thank you that you are a God that knows everything from beginning to end. You're the author. You're the finisher. You're the alpha, the first place. You have the preeminence in my life. And you're the end. I will see you at the end. And I will see you all the way from here to there. And I thank you that you are God. You're the only true God, the one that gave yourself for me. And Lord, I just love you. I just wanted to say it. I love you with all of my heart, with all of my mind, with all of my strength, with all of my possessions, with all of my influence, with all that I am. And I present to you my life. And I say, Lord, Make something beautiful out of me. Make something beautiful out of me. And I just thank you right now for what you're doing. Touch our hearts. Touch our minds. Touch our life. Touch our pocketbooks. Touch our cars. Touch our homes. Touch our kids. Touch our, our friends. Touch our peop the people at work. Touch all of those people, God. Lord, that they would see in me you looking back. And help us, Lord, to be ready when you walk by. When you walk by. So, Lord, right now I pray that you would help us, Lord, to receive the mantle of your love. Your banner over us is love. Help us to receive that truly in our life. And help us to never be the same. Help us to understand it's not about 14, 28, 37, or 42, and 5, and all of those things. Those are great numbers. But, Lord, it's about you. It's about what you, what you have decided a long time ago to do through us. Help us to, to, to get in line with that, Lord. Help us to understand it. Help us to see it. Give us courage, Lord, right now. In Jesus' name, amen and amen.